Since we are dealing with the new, the patient comes in a clo in clothing that can be raised up to get the new. The patient does, doesn't have to necessarily change into the hospital. But if the patient is in um, trousers, you should have to take it off and then put in the hospital. Now. And for, for, for image quality purposes, you have to take out, take out any opacities in the area of interest, any visible and removable opacities in the area of interest. So if we go straight into the, the projections of the new, we have the routine projections and then we have other projections that we'll talk about. So for the routine projections, we do AP and then lateral projections. And then for the other projections, we talk about the shoes and rosin deck projections. And we talk about the highlight the channel. So we start with the AP. For the AP, I'm going to make sure that the patient is either seated or lying down with their knees fully extended. And then we're going to make sure that the femoral condyles are parallel to the image receptor. So when a patient lies down to find lies to find, the tendency of the leg to be externally, externally rotated is high. So for such a patient, you have to internally rotate the, the leg to ensure that the femoral, the femoral condyles are parallel to the image receptor. So you externally, internally retain the leg to make sure that they are parallel. So for the AP, we are using a perpendicular, a 90 degree central ray when the patient is sitting. And we are centering at a point 1.5 centimeters below the apex of the patella with, the, with an FFD of 100 to 120 and a cassette size of 24 by 30 centimeters. So for the image valuing criteria for the AP, we want to make sure that the patella is centralized between the femoral condyles. The proximal tibiofibular joint is obscured owing to the slight overlap of the head of the fibula on the tibia. Then we are making sure that the shafts of the tibia and fibula are separated. The femoral tibial joint space is open and then there is no rotation. Okay, so for the additional considerations, so in some literature, for knee AP, we are told to sit. Others will also tell you to lie. But then, whichever way we are going to do it, we want to make sure that we are getting a true AP image of the knee. So one literature I saw was telling us that if a patient is lying supine, there are some modifications you have to do to the central wrist angulation. When a patient is sitting on the couch, you can use the vertical beam. So when a patient comes for a knee x-ray, the patient has wide hips and then a large gluteal muscles. This patient's, this patient's knee, the alignment of the knee will be different for the patients with smaller gluteal muscles and someone with no gluteal muscles at all. So this literature is telling us that for a patient with very small to no gluteal muscles, that's supposed to be a 5 degree quadrilateral angulation. So that we get the tibia plateau parallel to the central area. For a patient whose ASI is to the ear receptor is between 19 to 24 centimeters. You have to keep the central ray perpendicular. If a patient whose measurement between the ASIS and the image receptor is more than 25 centimeters, you have to give us 25 to 5 degree cephalic angulation. Also to keep the central ray parallel to the tibia plateau. So we'll do the lateral. So for the lateral positioning of the knee, the patient is going to lie on the side of the examen and then get the other limb in front of the affected limb and bend the affected limb 15 to 20 degrees. Again, some literature will tell you to bend it 45 degrees, some will tell you 90 degrees, some will give you a range between 20 and 45 degrees. For the sake of this presentation, I'm using 15 to 20 degrees, and I'll explain the reason. So the other limb is brought 
in front of the affected limb, and the sandbag is placed under the ankle of the affected side to bring the long axis of the tibia parallel to the image receptor. The position of the limb is now adjusted to ensure that the femoral condyles are spine pulled vertically. The center of the image receptor is placed at the same level with the medial tibia condyle. Okay, so the direction and center. Again, for the directing and centering of the radio, radiographic imaging of the knee, some literature will tell you that we are using a 90 degree beam, so a, a vertical beam to the knee. However, other literature will also tell you that we are going to ambulate depending on the patient's physique. So we we'll, we'll tackle both. So a vertical central is 90 degrees the long angle of the trivia is directed to a point 2.5 centimeters behind and below the apex of the patella. Or you angle 5 to 7 degrees cephala, entering the knee joint 2.5 centimeters, the medial condor. Once again, I'll explain why we are doing the angulation. So for image evaluation purposes. We want to make sure that the medial and lateral femoral condyles are spine closed. The patellar femoral joint space is still and untreated. The proximal tibial fibula joint is obscured owing to slice overlap of the head of the fibula and the tibia. And the shaft of the fibula projected posteriorly in relation to the shaft of the tibia. Okay, so this is how the position is going to be done. And then this a radiographic image of the lateral projection of the knee. So for other projections, we're talking about shoes and then shoes, Rosenberg, and then skyline merchant. So literature, current literature has told us that, or has informed us that for patients with early osteo arthritis, when they come for knee examination, the first thing we should do is a shoes or Rosenberg beam. Because reasons are shown that their sensitivity is higher for the detection of osteoarthritis. So, shoes and Rosenberg are not so different. The positioning is the same. The only difference between shoes and Rosenberg is the fact that for the shoes, the patient is bending the knee at 30 degrees. And for Rosenberg, the patient is bending the knee at 45 degrees. That's what differentiates them. But then they are members of the same family. So for the patient positioning, I feel like they can come in there. But it's a back in there. I think it's off. I'll use a one. Okay, so I'll use Elida as my patient. I'll use Elida as my patient. And then First, I'll try and demonstrate what he's going to do to him. So that he feels patients who come for shoes and rhythm break then have problems standing in the, in the shoes and rhythm break position. They want to make sure that they are demonstrating to them so that they see what exactly you are doing. So that they don't go and then they fumble before you realize they've fallen down. They want to make sure that they, they know what exactly they're going to do and then they're going to use the lowest possible time to get to them. So like, please bend your knee. So, he has bent, let's assume that he has bent his knees at approximately 30 degrees. So, we are doing a shoes projection. So, he has bent his knees. So, can you stand straight? One thing we want to prevent is that we want to prevent his feet from being apart. So, please bring your feet together. Okay, so then he bends his knees. So, he bends his knees. And if this was the back, he holds this part of the back for, for stability. So, he bends his knees at approximately. 30 degrees for shoes and 45 degrees for present day. And then we use a 10 degree collar angulation. So the angulation is going to enter exactly at the knee joint. So this is you can, you can start doing So this is used to demonstrate osteoarthritis. So this is what we are talking about. The patient stands against the, the image receptor. And then you have the, the central recurring at an angle of 10, angle of 10 degrees into the so knee. So the patient standing straight or is bent? Bent. 
Okay, so the center is horizontal. The longer it is, it's angled. At, what? At, At 10 degrees. 10 degrees. Just please. Then the patient is 45. And we 45 degrees. Okay. For reason. Right? So here we can clearly see the difference between the the Rosenberg, the Rosenberg and then the Britain AD. So for the Rosenberg, we want to see that the, the, tibia, the tibial spines or the intercondylar eminences are clearly visualized. So for the AD, you can see that some part of it is obscured or there is some supine position of the tibial spines. But for the Rosenberg, you can see that it's clearly demonstrated. We want to see that the tibial plateau is free from supine position. So this is what we use in the Demonstration of osteoarthritis. Do you have seen that? Yes, I see him. Okay, what's what's wrong? Okay, where is the first one? Child now. Let's see the man. Go on. When we compare these two images, this one and this one, this is an image of a standard weight bearing AP projection of the knee, and this is a weight bearing PA with Rosenberg. So, when we talk about Rosenberg, we want to make sure that the tibial spines are clearly demonstrated, the tibial plateau are not superimposed. Are not being superimposed by other bones. When you compare these, this tibia plateau and then this tibia plateau, you can see that there is some kind of narrowing here compared to this. And then here we can clearly visualize the tibia, the tibial spines compared to this. So we talk about the skyline return view of the knee. On the skyline view is used to access patellar fractures and then dislocations or subluxations. And in orthopedic use access access patellofemoral joint disease. So for the positioning, so there is a special positioning aid that is used for the skyline by chance. But we use this image for the demonstration purposes. So the patient is supposed to lie at the tail end of the table and then bend his or her knees. So if you are going to shoot, it's a superior inferior projection. So the beam comes from the up, from the top, from the superior part, and then comes down to the image receptor, the inferior part. So from a vertical position, you angulate the tube 160 degrees, or from a horizontal position, just 30 degrees. The patient bends the knee 45 degrees, and then you shoot onto the image receptor, which has also been angulated at 30 degrees. So here you can clearly visualize the patella without supine position and then free of, free of the femur. Yep, so this is the end of my presentation. Uh, very good presentation. What's the difference between the 